Hello world, welcome to another episode of TTV, Transportation Translated Video. Today's video is going to be targeted towards independent contractors and uh, owner operators. Today we're going to do a little math, alright? So get your calculators ready. We're about to figure out how much money we need to spend to get a load done and how long it's going to take us to get it done. All right, as you can see, I already got a load up here on the board. It says empty and loaded, miles, empty and loaded. All right, when you got the assignment, of course, you were empty. So it says that from, from the point where you got the assignment, you are 500 miles away from the shipper, where they want you to go get the load from. And once you get to the shipper, 500 miles later, and get loaded at the shipper, from there, it's a thousand miles to take it to the final destination. Total miles, 1,500. So what we're going to do is, what's a good day in miles to you, ladies and gentlemen? I believe anything over 500 miles in a day is a good day. Okay, that's the reason why I did these particular miles right here to show you that anything over 500 miles in a day is a good day. I don't know, you might have had a load that was only 300 miles or 200 miles, but the, the, the example that I'm going to use is showing you how to do your ETA, estimated time of arrival, and if you're an independent contractor or an owner operator, how to do the math to figure out how much fuel will be needed to get those particular miles done. So we're not going to fuel for the entire load. We're just going to do it day for day. And the reason why I'm doing this is I want you to understand that it's kind of easy, kind of easy if you're a math person to figure out how much fuel you needed just to get a day done. And we're going to fuel day for day. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm factoring in that my truck may have had a couple of breakdowns or I may have spent some money on some things that were unexpected, like uh, a blowout on a tire or something. So I'm kind of leery about my expenses and I want to purchase just enough to get what I'm doing done. Okay, day for day. So let's tackle today. All right, 500 miles to the shipper. Empty is what you was when you got the assignment and you are 500 miles away from the place where they want you to go get it. So if you want to find out your estimated time of arrival, you want to take the 500 miles that you're going to be traveling a day and you want to divide it by the speed limit. Okay, I put 70, but you know the speed limit could be 75 or if your truck is governed, the fastest you can go is maybe 60. Either way, take the miles that you're going to be traveling divided by the speed limit, and you should get your estimated time of arrival. If you do the math on this one, 500 divided by 70, you should have gotten a little over seven hours, seven hours and 15 minutes. But when you're giving someone your ETA, of course, by the numbers, it's a seven hour job, but you always want to tack on, tack, tack on a couple of extra hours for unforeseen events like getting stuck in traffic or something of that nature. So if it's a seven hour drive and seven and a half hour drive, seven hours and 15 minute drive by the numbers, you always want to tack on a couple of extra hours. So if they ask me how long it's going to take me to do it, by the numbers, it's a seven hour job, I'm going to say nine hours, if that makes sense. Okay, and that will give you your ETA. So the first thing we just learned, you want to take the miles that you're going to be traveling, divided by the speed limit, and it should give you your ETA, estimated time of arrival. How many hours it's going to take to get these amount of miles by the speed limit, okay? And once we figure that out, now we want to see how much fuel we need to get those amount of miles done. And it's a very easy process as well. Okay, so I did a little research. A big rig gets anywhere from six miles per gallon of fuel up to 10 miles out of every gallon of fuel purchased. So I'm just going to say my truck is getting eight. I'm going to stick it in the middle. Okay, my truck is getting eight miles out of every gallon of fuel that I purchased. So here are the miles that I'm attempting to drive today, which is 500 
I said my truck is getting eight miles out of every gallon of fuel. So I took the 500 miles that I'm going to be traveling divided by the fuel economy, which my fuel economy is eight. And it gives you the number of gallons of fuel that you will need to get these amount of miles done. When I did the math, 500 divided by eight miles per gallon that I'm getting out of it, I came up with 62.5, 62 and a half gallons of fuel. Of course, you can't see 500 miles in front of you, so you always want to purchase you a couple of extra gallons for wrong wrong turns or anything else you may run into it. So uh, the most, by the numbers, I need 62 and a half gallons. I might purchase me an extra five gallons. I might get 67. But either way, I'm staying within my numbers. And that's the whole key uh, to knowing how to make each load profitable by doing your numbers. Okay, and this video is just a quick example of showing you how to do it. It's very simple. Okay, and if I wake up tomorrow and everything, I thought, listen, once you get to the shipper, you got to get back up to the dock, so on and so forth. This may be a one day job. Okay, you wake up tomorrow and, and look, it's 1500 miles. If I did 500 today, right, tomorrow that's a thousand miles. This is like a three day job. You know, but again, your truck may go a little faster, you may get it done a little bit faster. But if you look at it, this is a three day job 500 a day, 500 the next day, another 500 on the third day. You got it done, and you know how to purchase the fuel instead of purchasing all the fuel, especially if you your truck has been giving you some problems. You can kind of, if that continues to, to, to happen, you can kind of keep your finger on top of the money that you're spending. So if something does happen along the way, you didn't overfuel is the point to that. Okay. Also, some of you uh, may work for a company that gives you a fuel solution. And when they say follow the fuel solution, what that means to you is you want to go to the places where they're telling you to get the fuel because that's where they are getting a discount on the fuel. When you get to that place, if you look up on the sign and it says, uh, $2.50. That's not what you're paying. The company may be getting, it's a big fleet. So the only reason why they're going there is because they're getting a discount on the fuel. So just because it says $2.50 on the pump outside, you may be getting it for $2. So don't get somewhere thinking you as an individual, the individual can do better than what they do. They're a big fleet and they only go where they're getting big discounts. So don't look up on the sign and it says $2.50 and across the street it says $2.25. You may have saved yourself $0.25 cent by your own knowledge, but if you had stuck what they told you to do, you would have saved yourself $0.50 cent a gallon. Okay. And another thing, following the fuel solution doesn't mean that you have to purchase the amount of fuel that they're telling you to purchase. You can do your own math and find out how much fuel you need. The reason why you're going to that particular truck stop is to get the discount that your fleet is providing you. So don't get it twisted. Okay. This is another episode of TTV, Transportation Translated Videos.